Welcome to this next lesson where we will go through an example of a reinforced concrete structural drawing. The first example that we investigated was a commercial project and now we will look into a residential project. I'll try to make this lesson brief and I'm not going to repeat myself because the previous lesson was pretty, pretty long. So you can always go back to the previous lesson and rewatch it. So the first plan we will look into is the level one general arrangement plan. In the previous drawings, we called it slab profile plan. They're just different names, but they convey the same details. First thing I would familiarize myself with in the drawing is the load bearing elements. You should be able to identify what members are supporting the slab and what members are loading the slab. There's a legend on the top left hand corner of the page where you can see the hatches that indicates load bearing columns and walls under or over or non load bearing walls. And if you are in doubt, as I emphasized in the previous lessons, you can always have the drawings aligned and move the page up and down so you can identify columns and walls below, above and continuous. Let's start from this upper corner. This hatch indicates load bearing walls under and the parallel lines hatch indicates wall over. So this wall comes from the level below and continue to the level above. This wall stops under the slab and I can tell that because it doesn't have the parallel lines hatch. The solid thick line around the perimeter is the slab outline and there is a dashed line running along the inner face of the wall and it turns down this way and between the slab outline and the dashed line we have a section of concrete 400 millimeters deep and on the inside is, it is 230 millimeters deep. I'm sort of getting the gist of the intent of the designer, but I'm still not 100% of what's happening here, okay? So to be 100% sure of what's happening, I'll look at the sections provided. So let's go to section 1.8. Okay, now it's very clear the intent of the designer. We have a 230 thick slab that steps down to a 400 millimeters beam in between the walls. Remember last lesson, I told you that a step on the slab soffit is represented by a dashed line. There we go. You have the soffit line here and it steps down at the inner face of the wall. And that's why you have a dashed line running along the face of the wall on the plans. So that makes sense, this dashed line here, that's the soffit step to the beam in between the walls. Let's understand what's going on at section 1.1. There's a 230 slab, then there's the dashed line, which means there's a step of the slab soffit, and following that, there's a solid line with a step tag. You've got a step here, a step here, which indicates an actual step on the top surface of the slab. The dashed line is dashed because if you stand on top of the floor, you can't see the soffit step. And then there are two PWU walls. It looks like to me that this is an outside balcony with a planter box. So PWU is a planter wall. Let's zoom into section 1.1 and see if we got it right. Okay, so it looks like exactly how we read the plan. There's a 230 slab and there's a step on the soffit, which we cannot see from above. That's why it's represented by a dashed line. Following that, there is an actual step and then the planter box walls, PWU. That's basically how we're gonna read these drawings, okay? Let's go through a couple of sections and then we jump to the reinforcement plans. Let's go to the other side on grid six and seven. Section 1.7 shows me that there is a 230 slab. Then there is a wall under supporting this slab. And also there is a soffit step because I can see a dashed line running along the inner face of the wall. It doesn't show any step tag. So I'm assuming there's no actual step on the floor. We are simply increasing the thickness of the slab from 230 to 400 millimeters. And along the edge, there is a 300 millimeters deep hob. So let's go to section 1.7 and confirm that. 
let's zoom in on section 1.7. Yep, so 230 here. The slab soffit steps down at the load bearing wall, and then the slab increases to 400 millimeters. And then along the edge, there is a 300 millimeters hob, or you can say a recess of 100 millimeters. So that's basically what you're going to do for this whole plan. You can download this PDF. I'll leave the and I'll leave the remaining sections as a homework for you. Try to look at the plan first and roughly draw the section before you go to the section detail, and then you confirm what you have drawn. The next drawing is the bottom reinforcement plan. You can tell that this drawing has way more lines than the previous one, which might make the reading slightly more difficult, but the principles will not change. There is a direction of bar line, which is the thicker line, and the extent line, exactly like we saw in the previous drawings. Let's go through an example here. This middle portion of the slab has N12s at 250 centers, and this direction in the bottom will be the first to be placed because you have the number one after the spacing and that represents the lane sequence. So you have bars all the way up here. So if I had to draw, you would have bars like this, space this way, 250. And then when it gets to this line, they increase to span between walls. So let's extend this bar, it goes all the way. And that happens to the other side as well. You have bars. Let's copy this. I suppose to copy all the way up here. And then when it gets to this side, it extends the bars, go all the way over the walls. And that's pretty much how you will see on site. There is one N16, 1.3 meters long extra bar with a hook. And remember the integrity reinforcement that we discussed in the previous lesson. So we have a column under, and if you have a column, you might need those extra bottom bars to prevent progressive collapse. And these reinforcement bars are called integrity reinforcement. We have two N20 bottom bars. There's a letter A tag. That tag indicates N12 closed leaks at 250 centers. If we go to the section, we can understand better what's happening. So that is section 1.5. If we go to section 1.5, there is a one meter deep beam with two N20 bars at the bottom. And then you have N12 at 200 side face bars, and the closed leagues go up to the top reinforcement. This dashed line is the soffit step, and as we've seen before in the slab arrangement plan, if we are stepping the bottom surface of the slab, we also have to step the bottom reinforcement. So we're looking at reinforcement on this direction now. They are any 12 at 250 centers, and this is the second layer of reinforcement. The drafter placed the tags outside the slab outline so that it doesn't get too messy. But you can see, you can see here the intersection point between the extent line and, and the reinforcement line. Let's have a look at the section to understand this better. So this is section, this is section 1.4. So if we zoom in at section 1.4, so the bottom reinforcement extends past the soffit step. So let's go back there, see what's happening. So you've got the bottom reinforcement that goes past the soffit, the, so the soffit line. Okay, that looks right. And the bottom rear of the balcony cogs up and it's tied to the top reinforcement. So let's see if there is anything else here. So there's five N16 at 250 centers, extra bars in this direction. So when you're doing your structure inspection, you should also be able to see the five N16 extra bars somewhere around here. 
Okay, let's go back to the plans. Typically at corners, you will have trimmer bars and that's what those tags with the letter X indicate. Now let's move to level one, top reinforcement plan. Okay, the first thing I notice is that the splices are at different locations from the bottom reinforcement plan, which makes sense due to the peak bending moment. So the, in the top reinforcement plan, we have the splice close to the, to the middle span in between walls. And then if we go to the bottom reinforcement, you don't have a splice here in the middle. That's something important for you to notice. You're also going to see the top reinforcement stepping at the wet area set down. So these areas where the reinforcement steps down, they're probably bathrooms. So you have a recess, you have a, a set down, and that's the reason you have to crank the reinforcement down. Another detail that I can see on this plan as well is that the reinforcement should be cogged at the ends. So if you look at the edge of the slab, the reinforcement is always cogged. So if I got a cog, in all the edge, you've got a cog. Here you've got a cog down. On the edge here, it cogs down, it cogs down, it cogs down. So also ensure when you do your inspection, the reinforcement at the edge of the slab is cogged. That one meter deep beam that we saw before, now we can see the top reinforcement, which is two and 16. So if we go to the section, those two bars here should be N16s. We saw in the bottom reinforcement plan that we have two N20 bars. Now on the top reinforcement plans, we saw that we, we need to have two N16s at the top. What else can we tell? We have some extra N12s stepping outside to the balcony and they are 2.5 meters long. On the left hand side, some N12 extras at 500 centers. They're 2.5 meters long as well, and they are running on top of the supports, which makes sense because you have a peak negative bending moment at the supports. Therefore, you might need some extra bars. And what else? And on the very end to the right, there are nine and 20s at 200 centers, extra bars, four meters long. So that's basically it, fellows. You can tell that these drawings have much more information for you to absorb. This PDF will be available for you. So go through the drawings yourself. And if you have any questions, just comment below. I'll see you in the next lesson.